Sir, I had one planet in particular Dustana in the sixth house, eighth house, or maybe in the twelfth. Uh, you said uh, recently that Dustanas always give us trouble, but I had a lot of gains during these planetary dashas. Has it ever happened with you that there was a planet in the sixth house or in the eighth house or in the twelfth house? All the lords of these houses were placed somewhere, anywhere. And then there was humongous gains. Life totally changed. Did it happen sometime to you or to anybody else? That's exactly what we'll discuss today. The topic is, when does planets in Dustanas give good results? All right? So if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing to it down below. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your Dustanas or Kendras or Trikonas or career marriage health, then you can go to my website also down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. Especially if you have good Dustana planet. <laughs> now, see, you have to understand the concept of planets and nakshatras here. Without going into nakshatras, you will not understand how or when can any planet, either, not only a planet in Dustana, but even a planet in a Kendra or a Trikon, can give good or bad results. You will not be able to understand that. Okay, So therefore, it's very crucial that you understand there is something known as nakshatras. Uh, now you may say, oh, but sir, I know nakshatras, you know, my, this planet is in that nakshatra, that planet is in this nakshatra. So maybe that's the way life is. Uh, maybe this will happen, that will happen. Well, I'm not talking of that. But you have to understand how to decipher the results of planets and nakshatras. So see, the thing is, planets, wherever they are placed or whichever houses they are lording, they only show the external circumstances. Which means, suppose a planet is there in the 6th house. Externally, it can show, let's talk in context of marriage. It can show externally that, uh, okay, you are uh, having some, uh, you are having some distance with your spouse. Which can mean uh, physical distance, which means you are away from your spouse due to some uh, financial, uh, some career reason. Uh, or maybe there's some health problems, so you're in the hospital. Or maybe it could mean on the other end, if it's a worst case scenario, it means you and your spouse do not like each other. And that, that is the reason because of that uh, disinterest, you are staying uh, separate. Or maybe it could also mean that you are divorced. Or it could also mean uh, you have abject hatred for the spouse. Now, which among these will you predict if somebody has a planet in the sixth house? Because you will find people with all these combinations and all of these things that I said, all the 10 possibilities could be there. So then if a person has a planet in the sixth, suppose Mercury is in the sixth and Mercury Dasha starts. So what will you predict to this person? What will you tell him or her that my dear sir, my dear madam, uh, this will happen. Will you stay separate or will you be divorced or it's just a mere physical separation and you will get back to your spouse uh, very soon. Similarly, if a planet is there in the 8th, what will happen? If a planet is there in the 12th, what will happen? And this can work for all uh, good houses also, like quote-unquote apparently good houses. So, for example, if a planet is in the 10th house, the person uh, may get some position, the person may get some authority, uh, the person may become very famous, the person may get a lot of money, the person may uh, start his own business, a person may start his uh, self-employed freelancing work. So how do you know what will happen, right? Because you, you can't just predict, you can't just say, oh, sun is there in the 10th, so you'll get some position, Mercury is there in 10th, you'll get some money. No, it doesn't work like that. Therefore, you need to go down to the level of nakshatras. So therefore, if you know what the nakshatra lord is indicating, then you can actually predict which one among these will happen. 
So for example, if your if if there's a planet in the sixth house and your let's uh, take any example and the nakshatra lord of that planet. Okay, nakshatra lord of that planet means so for example, if you are a Scorpio rising, Scorpio Lagna, so Aries is your sixth house, right? So that means if you have Mercury in Aries, in let's say Bharni Nakshatra, and then Venus is in the fifth house. Why do I say Venus? Because Venus is the Lord of Bharani. So Venus is the Nakshatra Lord of Bharani, but as well as Mercury, because Mercury is in the Nakshatra of Venus. Now, the Nakshatra Lord of Mercury is sitting in a house which helps marriage, right? Which is conducive for married life. So, therefore, uh, this uh, planet, Mercury, in the sixth house will not give any emotional trouble for marriage. It won't give uh, mental distance. It won't give mental anxiety. This is mere uh, physical separation, which means maybe the, some other house is involved, so you are going outside. Or maybe there is a bit of work stress, workload. That's all. Very simple. But now, uh, suppose this uh, Venus, right? Now, of course, if Mercury is in the 6th, then Venus can't be in the 10th. But let's assume here Mercury is in Aries, but he's not in Bharni. He is in Ashwini Nakshatra, okay? So then what happens? Who is the Lord of Ashwini? Ketu. So Ketu can be in the 10th, even if Mercury is in the 6th. Now, the 10th house is again 12th from the 11th house, which is also the house of marriage. So now this is a very serious uh, problem in terms of marriage and their interpersonal uh, relationship. This will mean that your planet is in the 10th and the nakshatra lord is also, I mean, your planet is in the 6th and the nakshatra lord is again in the 10th house, which is also a very bad house for marriage. This definitely means that there is serious crisis within the relationship. They are not wanting to stay with each other, right? But now let's take another situation. If this Mercury, this Ketu, the nakshatra lord of Mercury is not in the 10th house, it is in the 11th house, right? So it's in um, Virgo because for Scorpio ascendant, you will have Virgo in the 11th house. So imagine uh, Ketu is in Virgo now, right? He's in the 11th house. So then what happens? 11th house is a house which uh, encourages married life, right? So therefore, now because this Mercury is in the 6th house, and the Nakshatra Lord is in the 11th house. This will again not show any marital uh, distress, right? So this is how you know what exactly will happen. What will a planet in a Dustana do during its Dasha? Because otherwise, if you don't know, you will just tell the person, oh my God, sir, uh, this will happen, that will happen. But at the end, nothing might end up happening. In fact, if, the Naksha, if a planet is in 6th, and in this case, the Nakshatra Lord is in the 11th, this can mean you are having great success in competition, competitive exams, okay? Therefore, do not just blindly say your plant is in the sixth, you will divorce. It doesn't work like that. And even if it works, there are so many other things that you got to see, right? So for example, uh, physical separation can be there for any planet when it comes to marriage. But if Saturn, Rahu, Ketu are the planets or they are involved somehow, then this can uh, mean that you are not only uh, unhappy, but you are planning to take separation to the next level, which means you are planning for divorce, right? So therefore, you have to see either the natural malefics are involved, the natural benefics are involved. If natural benefics are involved, then although you may not like each other, although you may stay separate, but you will not go for divorce. Now, of course, you can also get divorced in dashas of natural benefits like Jupiter, Venus, uh, Moon, Mercury. You can get divorced. Uh, I don't deny. But then somehow Saturn, Rahu, Ketu will be involved in the Pratyantar or in the Antar Dasha, something like this. So now similarly, the 8th house. 8th house is also the house of inheritance. 8th house is also you know, unearned money, right? 8th house is also lottery. So if a planet is in the 8th house, 
and in the nakshatra lord of that planet is sitting in the 11th house this will give you huge humongous gains right but the 8th house will give you some pain some pain will be there but there will be very short lived and eventually you will have lot of gains uh so for example uh, if you get inheritance it might mean that your father or mother has they have passed away right or it could mean that you know you have retired so you have got like a lot of money after retirement right but then you have to retire <laughs> or it could mean that uh, if you have a lot of money invested somewhere you are just withdrawing them and you had invested it somewhere and it has just grown but then now you are withdrawing it right so now that money will not be able to grow further because that's the eighth house some pain will be involved with it but then you have a huge sum of money right so that's how you know when a planet is in a dustana but he will give you great gains similarly it's with the 12th house so a planet is in the 12th house oh yes and of course 12th house of the bhav chart 6th house of the bhav chart 8th house of the bhav chart many questions i'm getting regarding bhav chart and you have asked me so many questions regarding bhav chart so please go and watch the bhav chart video it is there please go to youtube and type exotic astrology bhav chart b h a a v c h a r t bhav chart bhav chart tells you placement of the planet right which house the planet is in not the sign right and because the sign uh, the house deals with the physical manifestation so the results of a planet should be deciphered from the bhav chart not from the lagna chart okay the lagna chart will tell you your awareness that's all now similarly if a planet is in the 12th house and the nakshatra lord is in the 11th house or maybe uh, it's in the 5th house that it can give you creativity 11th house can give you income after some expenditure huge income like maybe you have a youtube channel you have invested some money to buy a camera and a good microphone and then your youtube cha channel shoots up right so you invested some money but then you had humongous gains so the nakshatra lord is in the 11th house and now if the nakshatra lord is in the 5th house then this can show that you have uh, great creative depths you are going deep into creativity right and if the nakshatra lord is in the 9th house you could take a pilgrimage right that's an example or these are examples by which you know when a planet in a dusthana will give you raj yoga or you know uh, good results okay so therefore don't think that planets in dusthanas will always give you bad results of course because at a planetary level it is in the dusthana so some pain will be there like 6th house some separation will be there uh, 8th house somebody will die or like uh, you'll be retiring or you have, you will withdraw your investment so something like this will happen right and 12th house there will be some expenditure but then eventually there will be gain right so therefore this is how you will know if a planet is in a dusthana and it will give you good results okay otherwise uh, you will just make blunders because i can show you 10 charts of people who have a planet in the 6th their dasha got activated the i mean the dasha started and then they got married and you were like oh my god i give a prediction that you will not get married in this dasha but then you got married why because the nakshatra lord was in the 7th house and maybe the nakshatra lord was uh, no also ruling a good house like a good house for marriage like the second house right so for example you know in v in the case of venus if um if you are aries lagna then venus is your second lord seventh lord yes so in this case it can happen for example i am saying all right so this is how you know this is how you should study okay because then you will know the overall picture right and of course you should look at the entire chart and where the flow is happening by that only you will come to know if a planet is going to give you good results or bad results from a dusthana perspective all right so that will be all from my side if you want to watch other videos on dusthanas i'll put them here and if you want to get a consultation from me you can always go to my website down in the description section and if you're new then please subscribe to the channel and if you like this video click the thumbs up and 
God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and do not fear if you have planets in Mustanas. All right. Thank you.